This is an All Ears English podcast, episode 1982. Should you try to sound American? Welcome to the All Ears English podcast, downloaded more than 200 million times. Are you feeling stuck with your English? We'll show you how to become fearless and fluent by focusing on connection, not perfection, with your American host, Aubrey Carter, the IELTS whiz and Lindsay McMahon, the English adventurer, coming to you from Arizona and Colorado, USA. And to get your transcripts delivered by email every week, go to allearsenglish.com forward slash subscribe. You may have wondered if you need to change your accent, and we're here to share that your accent is beautiful and you should celebrate it. However, if you need to imitate an American accent, we'll share three tips to pull it off. Hello, Aubrey. How's everything going today? I'm great. How are you, Lindsay? I am excellent. Fantastic. Excited to be here. What are we talking about on today's episode? We got a really interesting question from a listener about American accents. And I think it's going to be interesting to talk about, you know, do you need an accent? Can you keep your accent? Because there's a lot to say about this and a lot of different viewpoints, right? Oh my gosh. Accents are huge, right? As soon as we hear someone, I think that we as human beings, we connect deeply with the voice. That's why podcasting is so popular, so powerful, right? Popular and powerful. And so accents, they do matter, right? And so we're going to get into that today. Yes, it's going to be interesting. I've actually had a lot of people tell me they love my accent, which seems so oh, cool. strange to me because I don't feel like I, in my <laughs> mind, I don't have an accent, right? I'm sure this is yeah. how it is for a lot of people. Like, wait, I have an accent? Of course, we all do, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Depending on where we're even in English, there are so many accents within the United States. Yeah, there are a lot. And some of them are more distinctive than others. But do we have a listener question? Should I go ahead and read that question today? Yes, we got this great question from Sumit Ramdas. Yeah, go ahead and read it for us. All right. So Sumit says, how y'all doing? Don't worry about me. I'm fit as a fiddle. That's so awesome. <laughs> great idiom. I started listening to your podcast six months ago and I fell in love with it in the first go. Mm -hmm. Since then, I've been listening to your podcast every single day. I think a lot of listeners have fallen in love with Allers English, Aubrey. <laughs> Not surprising. It's just so fun. It's such a good podcast. <laughs> I love the energy level, the quality, the articulation, and the intricacies you ladies bring to the table. Keep up the great work. My question is how to acquire an American accent. People like me who are 30 or older have, have a slight or strong mother tongue influence. It's hard to do voice modulation and pretend to have an American accent. Any tips for that? I appreciate y'all and your team. Thanks a zillion, Sumit Ramdas. So good. Yes. Great question. Such a great question. Sumit sent in a bunch of other questions. Some of them we'll save for another episode. But the first thing that's interesting is, uh, you know, of course it is okay to have some mother tongue influence. As long as you can be under e easily understood and communicate, I love an accent. I honestly would rather speak to someone who has like an accent very different from my own than yeah. like my neighbor. No offense oh, to my too. neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. I mean, we're, I guess this is a good place to mention this. We are seeing a trend, which I love, which I think is really refreshing in this industry, the language learning industry, to just embrace who you are a little bit, right? To not try to yes. sound like a native speaker or sound like a British person or an American. Instead, what if we could speak clearly, but sound like ourselves and focus on that connection, right, Aubrey? Yes, I love that. Exactly. And what's interesting is in Sumit's question where he's, he's saying it's difficult to pretend to have an American accent, I felt like the question was more about how do we imitate another accent? It made me think about actors who have to yeah. sound li like they are actually from another country. They have to imitate it. They have to pretend that that is their accent. And that's a different thing entirely, right? Yeah, we actually, now that I think about it, we had someone on the show last summer, Ron Carlos, who that is his job. He works in Hollywood and he helps actors uh, build their accent. He worked with a woman, Caitlin Devers, an actress who was on a show where she was in a deep Southern kind of rural Louisiana, which is a very different accent. Right. right. And he worked with her to develop that accent. So go back and search for 
Ron Carlos's episode guys for that. So there is yes. a whole industry where people focus on this in Hollywood alone. Exactly. And just like Sumit said, it is more difficult the older you are, the longer you have had yes. your own accent, that you're used to making phonemes a certain way. And so we are going to give you guys today three tips to pronounce words like an American. There are quite a few things that are different. And this is for like sort of the general American accent, right? Because like mm -hmm. we were saying, yeah. it's very different if you're in the South or in Boston or there are so yeah. many accents within the United States even, but this is, um, there's a, a sort of a general American accent that these sounds will mimic. Yeah, it's a good question, right? If you're from another country, would you consider the deep Southern accent to be as American as like the Midwest Minneapolis accent, which is a whole other game? Uh, I think they're so different, but maybe, you know, we hear those differences more so than right. someone who doesn't necessarily speak as a native speaker. I don't know. It's really That's interesting. probably the case, right? Because yeah. I, I will hear someone imitate several different British accents and mm. I sort of feel like, oh, they all sound the same. They all Not sound exactly yeah. the same, but pretty similar. Right. And it's probably the same within the United yeah. States. Like you might hear some difference, but it's probably more glaring to us. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I want you guys to keep in mind as you're listening today, no one is saying you need to sound like an American. Again, I right. just want to reemphasize that we are flipping our values here in this industry. And I personally love that, Aubrey, because then we can, like I said, focus on what really, truly matters, which is our philosophy connection. Right? I agree. Absolutely. Your accent is beautiful. Don't try to get rid of it. I, I would say don't yeah. try to sound like an American, except if there are cases like this where you need to imitate that accent, yeah. right? You want to maybe as a yeah. joke, as like a party trick show, uh, you know, know, trick people, make them think you're American for a few minutes. I like some of these actors like Renee Zellweger, right? Where we all right. thought she was British after doing yeah. Bridget Jones Ferry. Or right now, Bella Ramsey on The Last of Us. I saw okay. an interview with her and was shocked that she's British because her American really? accent is so impressive. I thought she was American. Interesting. And Kira Knightley, what was she in? Was she in Last of Us or Game of Thrones? She well, was no, she was in A Pride and Prejudice and she's been in a lot of films. British. And she is British, but she's she does British. an excellent American accent. Got it. Or maybe it's flipped of that. I'm trying to remember now <laughs> because she, I've seen both. Like in Pride and Prejudice, she had a British accent. In okay. a lot of movies, she's had an American accent. They're both right. such good. Like, who knows? Is she British? Is she American? I bet the average American on the street wouldn't be sure. <laughs> it's kind of amazing because as an actor or actress, you not only have to be great at just acting, but you also have to be great at linguistics and pronunciation and bringing in that accent. is just incredible. Exactly. Uh, right. Yeah, there are specific so. sounds that are very different depending on the accent. So we're going to go into three of these today. And these are things that you will want to practice. You'll want to folks if you're wanting to imitate the American accent. There are more than this, right? There are quite a few. And if you're Googling this, you'll see there's like there are different ones depending on if you're wanting to sound have the southern mm -hmm. accent or depending on the accent you're going for. Right. And then it'll always yeah. have sort of this general American accent, which these three will help you create. <laughs> I love it. So let's get into these tips. I think our listeners are ready. They understand our philosophy on this. So if you do decide for a day or for a year that you want to speak with an American accent, here are three ways to do it, right? What yeah, is the so first one, Aubrey? This first one is all about the short A sound, as in the word cat. And in American English, it's raised. We make it into a diphthong, which means there are two sounds there before every nasal consonant. So for example, when we say man, you can hear how the vowel changes. Man, man, mm -hmm. man. Okay. and can't. Same thing, right? We're creating this double sound there. Whereas in a lot of accents, England, you know, it might be like man, can't, right? It would be oh, one sound. Yes. There's no diphthong there. Right. We don't lose. So it becomes more nasally. Would you say that, Aubrey? We yes. make that A sound very nasally, all up in the nose. Yeah. Yes. And more so depending on where you're from, right? It might be um, more extreme depending on where you are. But most Americans, it's definitely more nasal than yeah. British. Very interesting. Okay. So that is the one thing that we could do that we'd be recognized as being, as speaking like an American, as an American accent regardless like anyone would recognize that anywhere in the world yeah exactly right you can create these short a sounds create give that diphthong and you're automatically going to sound more american i love it 
Okay, Aubrey, let's move into the second thing that we can do. The second tip, what is it? So it's the letter R. This We focused a little bit on this in a recent episode, if you missed it, 1966, which was called Are You Pronouncing R Correctly in English? And we were mostly talking about how R changes depending on where it is in a word, but it's definitely different in the American accent as opposed to some other accents in English. It yeah. is pronounced before consonants, like in the word hard. Mm -hmm. It's a harder R. And at Arr. the end of words like car and mother, maybe not uh -huh. in Boston. But not most in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Most American accents, it's a harder R. Yeah. And if you want to get a sense of how it's different in a place like Boston or even New York in some ways, uh, watch Goodwill Hunting. That is a great example yes. of just native Boston accents. Yes. Absolutely. Right. But depending on where you go, you might almost not hear that R at all at the mm -hmm. end of words or like in the word hard, right? It must be like hard. That's just a very soft R in other accents. Right. Do we have another episode where we talked about the R pronunciation, Aubrey? Yes, that was 1966 that I was just mentioning, right? Where yeah. we, it's all about how R is different depending on where it is in the word. So definitely yes. you guys search in on our website, on the app for 1966 if you missed that one. Go back to that one, guys. All right, let's move on to the third one. What is it, Aubrey? What is this unrounded vowels? What does yes. that even mean? So uh, words like lot and rod mm -hmm. are pronounced with an unrounded vowel in English. So okay. it sounds like ah, uh, ah. Uh. Whereas in some countries, it would be like lot, lot, rod, oh. right? It's a rounded vowel. So the sound is, you would almost say flatter, right? Unrounded kind of means the same thing as flatter. So mm -hmm. these, a lot, it's a lot about vowel sounds, right? I know I was listening to a show and there was an Australian and um, there were so many words she would say where I'm like, oh, okay. You know, um, yeah, there's like almost an R sound at the end of some vowels. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting how much it changes depending on where you're from. Oh, that's so good. I love that. I love the Aussie accent, by the way. It's definitely my favorite. Um, yes. It just like, sounds... At the end of no, when they'd be like, no. Then there's almost <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <"Rr." laughs> right. I, I love it. It's hard for me to, to create it, you know, but right. it is. It's a beautiful accent. Where does it come from? And we have done interviews with Aussies. We've done a few interviews with Pete Smithson. So if you come back to our blog, allersenglish.com, you can type in Pete Smithson and you'll get two or three episodes with him. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And of course, there are many more sounds that ch that change in the American accent, right? The schwa sound, voiced and voiceless TH. So be sure to follow. We're going to be doing more pronunciation episodes, episodes coming soon. Yeah. You don't want to miss any of them. Yeah, I love that idea. And we've been focusing more in our fluency courses, Aubrey, in really dedicating a lesson or multiple lessons to pronunciation sounds, right? Really helping our listeners level up their pronunciation to be clear. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it's one thing to be aware of these sounds. It's another thing entirely to really be able to figure out how to make your mouth create these different phonemes and then be able to do it in conversation to connect with others. It's so true. It's so true. All right. What do we have next here? Do we have some recommendations? Yes. Right. So of course it's useful to be aware of the different sounds, but the best way to be able to produce an accent is to hear it a lot and do some mimicking, shadowing, watching TV shows, movies, listening to podcasts, audiobooks that have American accents. So I think okay. we should give some recommendations. What do you think? All right. Let's hear what your recommendation is for a podcast, Aubrey. Do you have something to let our listeners know about? Yeah, so there's one called Crime Junkie. This is true crime, but most true crime podcasts take like several episodes, many, many hours to cover one case. This one, it's like each episode is one case, so it's a sort of a summary. But what's great is the hosts, there are two women from Indiana, so it's that Midwestern accent. Every now and then I'll hear sounds that are slightly different from my accent, but that's a great podcast that's interesting and really fun American accents. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. And how about a TV show? This is one. My daughters love it. I started watching it with them. It's called Ginny and Georgia on Netflix. Oh. Georgia has a very strong Southern accent. And then she moves with her kids to New England. So the accent is a little bit of a focus of the show because her accent is so different from everyone else who lives there that I think mm -hmm. this is a great way to hear the difference because you hear them speaking to each other, someone with a Southern accent and then someone with an accent in New England. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's, that can be very, very different right. in the way of the rhythm of speaking, not just the way of creating the words, but what we say, the uh, guys, we did interview, we've talked about this before, Aubrey, um, the ladies from Steel Magnolias podcast. Yes. And so they're awesome. Uh huh. And they're also from the Nashville area. And so if you want to hear those accents and just hear those differences, go there and look up uh, Steel Magnolias podcast in our search bar on our website, allersenglish.com. I like uh -huh. these recommendations, Aubrey. One from Indiana, one from Georgia. <laughs> yes. Do you have a couple of recommendations, Lindsay? I do. I'm debating which one to share, but I'll just throw this out there. So I listen to podcasts more as an information gathering and education mm. thing. So my podcast deck probably looks a lot different from yours. Obviously. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Mine's more entertainment <laughs> and language learning, right? I have I the like French that. and Spanish okay. language learning podcast too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one I would recommend for a podcast is the Money Guy podcast, which these guys are from the Nashville area from, I think, uh, yeah, near, near Nashville in Tennessee. And they just have accents that you'll totally be able to understand. It's not so deep South that you won't get it at all guys, but you know, you can hear the accent for sure, especially for the older guy. It's a, an older man, like in his fifties, you know, more senior in his work as a financial advisor and a younger guy in his thirties. And so okay. it's a nice duo, um, just information about money and how to manage your finances. Right. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. I can probably mm -hmm. use some advice in that realm. <laughs> yeah, we all could. We all could. So that's the first one. And then for a TV show, I like the show Ghosts. And the reason I like this for accents is that you do hear a few different accents because you have these ghosts that died on this property from all different eras in time. Mm. And so you have Hetty. I think she was from the 1800s. Um, and so there is a different speaking rhythm when we go back in time. There's a guy from the 80s, uh, Pete who also kind of speaks with like a very up and down sort of, it feels 80s to me. And oh, so we can think about accents in that way too. You have to think about how they've changed over time yes. and just even yes. within a few decades. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Okay. A, a lot of that is about the vocab choices and the topics they bring up and their references, mm. but there is a layer of speaking rhythm there and accent too. So check it out guys. So oh, good. awesome. Great recommendations. Guys, I think the takeaway is, of course, you can have an accent in English. Yeah. You know, I will always have an accent in Spanish and French. It's it's OK, right? It's so much more important to be able to communicate and make that connection. Every accent is beautiful. Totally. I 100 percent agree with that. Focus on being understood and understanding others and that connection moment. Always look for that connection moment. If you want to try to sound, you know, speak with an American accent, here are three tips to get started, but come back to your core values and come back to who you are to be clear, right? Exactly, right? Awesome. I love this, Lindsay. It's fun to think about imitating other accents and how you could do it, but also to celebrate our accents that that whatever your accent is, it's beautiful. And that's the, yeah. the goal is just to connect. Yeah, I think broadly, our culture is kind of coming back around to let's celebrate who we actually are beyond just speaking, right? And in, in, in how and in how we look, how we dress, just what we want in our lives. Let's come back to what we who real we really are. So good. yes, right? Good to celebrate that. Yeah, so good. Good stuff, Aubrey. Thanks for hanging out today. I'll see you very soon. Awesome. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to All Ears English. Would you like to know your English level? Take our two-minute quiz. Go to allearsenglish.com forward slash fluency score. And if you believe in connection, not perfection, then hit subscribe now to make sure you don't miss anything. See you next time.